welcome to course ergonomics in automotive design. So, this course from the title it is evident that this is related to how we can apply ergonomic principles in automotive design process. And this automotive design here we are discussing automotive design, this automotive design means not only automobile, but all other automotive products including on road vehicle, off road vehicle and different types of two wheeler, four wheeler, three wheeler. So, all are coming under this automotive products, but during the course we will mainly concentrate on four wheelers and that is passenger car. Now, today we are going to discuss our first module that is introduction to automotive ergonomics and in this module there are four topics. So, first topics is ergonomics and its domain of specialization this one. Next the role of ergonomics in automotive design process that is the second one and third one is system design approach in automotive ergonomics and the last one driver information acquisition and processing. So, now we are starting with the first topic that is ergonomics and its domain of specialization. Now, if you look at this picture then what we can see there are two wheelers, there are three wheelers, two wheelers are there, three wheelers are there, there are different types of vehicles starting from on road vehicle, off road vehicle and the use purpose is also different. Some vehicles are being used for civilian purpose, some for military purpose or defense purpose. So, there is huge variation in vehicle design. Now, while we are designing this type of automotive vehicle or automotive products, then what is happening? It is very challenging for the ergonomist as well as for the designers to design this type of vehicle where we can accommodate the passenger or driver or even maintenance person or the assembly worker there there is different variation in terms of their body dimension in terms of their force capability in terms of their various psychological needs so this is really challenging that how we can make the automotive product compatible with the intended user so that is the biggest challenge for the designer as well as for ergonomist so the varying anthropometrical property, biomechanical property as well as cognitive abilities that to be looked into while you are designing this type of automotive products. Now, what is ergonomics? So, first ergonomics this word actually came from Greek word ergon meaning work and nomos mean law. So, in combination this is the law of work. Now, if you look at these two images one, one lady is cooking sitting on the ground in squatting posture and another image what we can see? We can see lady standing and cooking on a raised platform. So, if we consider this is the scenario A and this is the scenario B then which one is preferable for us in terms of or from the viewpoint of ergonomics. So, what is happening here that lady can sit on this stool or getting some support and can view also what she is cooking but difficulty in bringing utensils or other whatever required for the cooking. In this case the lady is standing, she is free to walk, she can move around and she can cook. So, out of these two scenario from the viewpoint of ergonomics we can prefer this one. Why are we preferring this one? Because in this scenario what is happening? We are fitting the task to the human being. The whatever the task? the task is being designed as per the requirement of human being. But on the other hand if you look at scenario A in this case what is happening? We are forcing the human being to be fitted with the task. The task is on the ground and we are forcing the human being yes you have to be fitted with this task. So, that is not the motto of ergonomics that is not the goal of ergonomics. In ergonomics always we have to try how we can redesign the task, redesign the product, redesign the work accessories or in other words how we can design the whole system so that it is compatible, it is comfortable for the human being and we can improve the performance and efficiency. So, from ergonomics consideration this is the preferable scenario. Now, as we mentioned there are numerous definition of ergonomics. In brief generally various authors defined ergonomics like this four points. First one fit the task to the person use the rule of work, work smarter not harder and 
makes things user friendly. In India, this subject ergonomics was introduced long back 1945, the first course related to ergonomics was started in Calcutta University and that is also by our pioneer ergonomist Professor R. N. Shin. So, according to R. N. Shin, what is the definition of ergonomics? Ergonomics is the science, technology and art of man at work. So, this is a nice definition where he is mentioning that ergonomics not only one science branch or a technology branch or a art, this is the culmination of all these disciplines. International Ergonomic Association IEA 2000, they also defined ergonomics. So, according to their definition, ergonomics or human factors is a scientific discipline concerned with understanding of interactions among humans and other elements of a system and the profession that applies theoretical principle, data and methods to design in order to optimize human well-being and overall system performance. According to IEA, what is the definition of ergonomist or practitioner of ergonomics? Practitioners of ergonomics and ergonomist contribute to the design and evaluation of tasks, jobs, products, environments and system in order to make them compatible with the needs, abilities and limitations of the people. So, what is the definition of ergonomics as well as who are ergonomist that definition has been provided by IEA. Now, there are so many other definitions by other authors, other researchers. So, to mention a few, here three definitions are mentioned if we look into this. So, first one, human factor engineering is the practice of designing products so that the user can perform required use, operation, service and supportive tasks with a minimum stress and a maximum efficiency. Now, another definition by Hallander 1981, according to this definition, human factor engineering aims at modifying work, procedures and machinery by taking into account the physical, psychological capabilities and limitation of human beings. Similarly, there are so many other definition. The definition provided by Fernandez in 1995, so according to this, the design of workplace, equipment, machine, tool, product, environment and system taking into consideration the human's physical, physiological, biomechanical, psychological capabilities and optimizing the effectiveness and productivity of work systems while assuring the safety, health, well-being of the workers. In general, the aim of ergonomics is to fit the task to the individual, not individual to the task, which we also mentioned earlier with this scenario that always we should try, the, that is the main principle of ergonomics, we should try to fit the task as per the requirement of human being. We will never try to force human being to be accommodated with the task. This is not our goal. Our goal is that from the viewpoint of ergonomics that we have to fit the task as per the requirement of human being. Now, few other definitions and applied science. So, what is ergonomics or human factors? This is an applied science that coordinates the design of devices, system, physical working condition with the capabilities and requirements of the workers. So, this definition is from the industry perspective. The commonly highlighted view of the definition of ergonomics as stated above is mainly about the relationship between humans, machine system, job design and the work environment. So, this definition was provided by Jaffer et al in 2011. Now, in this context while you are discussing about what is ergonomics, its definition and various definitions provided by various authors. In this context, it is important to know about the society or association of ergonomics, which is present all over the world. So, in 1959, various scientific organizations deal with ergonomics grouped under the roof of International Ergonomics Association. This International Ergonomics Association IA was established in 1959. On the other hand, in India, in 1983, the Indian Society of Ergonomics was established and this is the only professional body representing the ergonomics and ergonomics related professionals in India. Now, coming to the automotive ergonomics. So, the earlier we discussed about the general definitions of ergonomics. Now, particularly what is automotive ergonomics? 
Automotive ergonomics is nothing but consideration of ergonomic principles and use of ergonomic tools and techniques in the field of automotive design process. Now, if you look at this image, so this is one driver and the driver is interacting with the vehicle components. There is steering wheel, brake, clutch and so many other controls, displays. So, while this driver is interacting, driver that human being is interacting with this machine tools, equipment or work elements inside the vehicle, even outside the vehicle, that time this while this interaction is happening, that interaction is actually influenced by so many other factors. What are those factors? So, environmental factors are also there, psychosocial factors are there, economic factors are there. So, all these factors ultimately affect this interaction. How will be the interaction? This interaction good, bad that is actually decided by various factors which are the influencing factors. Now, during this interaction, so there are three components. One component that is the human being, another is the work accessories and the third component is the surrounding physical environment. These three components, human, work accessories or tools or equipment and the surrounding physical environment, these three components together making the whole system. Then what is the goal of automotive ergonomics? The automotive ergonomics is actually dealing with this type of interaction not only with the driver or passenger and vehicle component, but on the other hand all other people who are engaged in this process. Who are those people? Say for example, who are designing those vehicle, who are designing vehicle components, who are making the, who are the assembling the parts, who are developing the vehicle, then there is also maintenance operation, there is also personnel who are engaged in service. So, all these people while they are interacting with the vehicle or vehicle system, then what is happening? If we can consider ergonomic principle in the design process, then what will happen? It will ultimately leads to enhanced performance, productivity efficiency at the same time reduction of error and accident. So, what is the overall definition? So, from this scenario how we can define ergonomics? So, from this scenario we can define ergonomics or automotive ergonomics that automotive ergonomics is a specialized branch of ergonomics where we are discussing about the human compatibility with automotive products and all other factors which affect that these are the factors all other factors which affecting these interactions. Why? So, that we can improve the performance, efficiency, productivity of the overall system, not only the user. User's performance will be increased at the same time overall the system performance, that system comprised of human surrounding environment, equipments surrounding physical environment. The whole system's performance, efficiency, productivity should be increased at the same time there should be less chance for error and accident. Now, as these two terms are coming repeatedly, one is human factors, human factors engineering, ergonomics. So, now for the student they are confused, then these two terms are different or they are synonymous. So, what is the actual difference or you can also think are these two terms, we can use these terms interchangeably, yes. Now, we can use these two terms interchangeably and we can assume that these two terms are synonymous, mean, meaning is similar. But if you look into the history, then what we will find? The human factors from the in terms of country of origin, where from it originated? This subject human factors engineering or human factor, it evolved from USA, United States of America. On the other hand, the subject ergonomics is originated from European countries. Now, subjects of origin, from which subjects this human factors originated or which are the mother subject of this human factors? So, origin subjects are psychology, mainly psychology, mean started from cognitive ergonomics perspective. While human factors started, it actually evolved from the psychology background that applied experimental psychology, engineering psychology, human engineering. Mean initially human factors actually dealing with cognitive aspects of ergonomics or human factors. But in case of ergonomics, ergonomics originated from the subjects like anatomy, physiology, industrial medicine, design, architecture, illumination engineering like this type of subjects. And so, during its origin ergonomics was mainly looked after the issues related to physical aspect, while human factors is dealing with 
cognitive aspect. But later on what happened? In human factors, all the issues related to physical aspects came. That is why now in human factors, we are dealing with both physical aspect as well as cognitive aspect. On the other hand, in case of ergonomics, when it originated, it was mainly physical aspect related, mean physical ergonomics aspect. But later on, it also included the cognitive aspect. That is why there is as such no difference with the present time scale. So, we can use ergonomics and human factors interchangeably. In USA, the human factor society recently changed its name to human factors and ergonomics society. Earlier, it was human factor society. As the human factors and ergonomics are similar or you can use synonymously, that is why they change its name to human factors and ergonomics society. Now, ergonomics and its domain of specialization, under that we are discussing about what is the human factors or ergonomic issues when we consider in automotive design process. So, frankly speaking, there is no specific point to start. Ergonomics is actually present throughout the whole design process of automotive products. It is the start from the very beginning that is the conceptual phase of automotive design process. The purpose is to address and accommodate the various needs and expectation of the user or customers. These users and customers include the occupant that is the driver, passengers, different vehicle occupants. On the other hand, the personnel involved in assembly line maintenance service. So, automotive while you are thinking about the automotive ergonomics or automobile ergonomics, then we not only considering passengers, driver, but we also need to think about the other personnel who are involved in assembly line, component design, maintenance, service. So, all these people we have to consider. Then how we can develop the automotive design, automotive design process more human friendly, more user friendly. So, now basic needs of the driver, what are the basic needs while we are designing an automotive product, particularly say passenger car. So, obviously we have to think about various features like mobility, comfort, convenience. We also have to think about the various safety aspects, how we can avoid crash, how we can protect from the crash, how we can reduce the accident proneness. Similarly, we have to think how using ergonomic principle, we can increase the efficiency that is the cost, mileage, how we can increase the pickup, how we can increase the fuel economy. On the other hand, also we have to think about the aesthetic part that is entertainment, stylish look, then craftsmanship. So, these aspects also we have to consider while developing that automotive products. Now, why ergonomics is necessary for automotive design? Firstly, developing superior automotive products by enhancing user satisfaction in terms of functionality, usability as well as aesthetic. Ergonomically designed automotive products are generally more user compatible, efficient and safe. Accommodating wide range of customer or user population who have variation in terms of age, gender, somatotypes, anthropometric and biomechanical characteristics. So, all of them to be accommodated in the automotive product. If we consider one automotive product like passenger car, then while we are designing that passenger car, we cannot mention okay, this passenger car is only for this particular group of people. We have to think that how we can accommodate in that product all types of people with variation in their age, sex, somatotype, difference in physical capabilities as well as their aesthetic need. Consideration of ergonomics helps in reduction of both physical and cognitive load during operation. So, vehicle should be designed in such a way while the operator, I mean any user is using that vehicle or automotive product, his cognitive as well as physical load for operating that vehicle should be as less as possible. Next, ensure various usability dimension like effectiveness, efficiency, engaging, error tolerance and easy to learn. This has to be ensured. Then helps to meet all pre-selected ergonomic standards and requirements. If we consider ergonomic design principle in the automotive design process, then what will happen? Obviously, it will help to meet the pre-selected ergonomic standards and requirements. 
Now, after discussing about ergonomics, its importance in automotive design, now we are coming to the next portion. In this subtopic, we are discussing about domain of specialization. The subject ergonomics or human factors, we can categorize mainly under three domain of specializations. One, physical ergonomics, second, cognitive ergonomics and third one is the organizational ergonomics. Under physical ergonomics, we discuss about human anatomy, anthropometry, physiology, biomechanics and under biomechanics posture, manual material handling, safety, repetitive movement, musculoskeletal disorder. This type of various aspects, physical aspects of human being and its compatibility with the automotive components are discussed under physical ergonomics. So, here you can see while this person that driver is driving this vehicle, then while if we want to study physical ergonomics aspect, then what will we study? We study the seating comfort, whether the person can see outside, how is his visibility inside and outside the vehicle, uh, say how it is, is in operation, steering wheel, brake, etc. Similarly, in case of cognitive ergonomics, we are discussing about mental processes that while driver or passenger or any other maintenance person is using that vehicle or working on that vehicle, then we have to think about these aspects of the human being that perception, memory, reasoning, motor response. Now, if we take one example of cognitive ergonomics in case of passenger car, then which aspect should we deal in case of cognitive ergonomics? We discuss about how various informations from the road or from inside the vehicle, various informations through various sensory channels, our sense organs we are perceiving and accordingly we are interacting or we are driving the vehicle. So, information access processing from infotainment system or from say speedometer. So, the driver is receiving that information, perceiving that and accordingly doing some muscular activity to control various control operations or navigating that vehicle. Now, third area is the organizational ergonomics. That organizational ergonomics, it is dealing with socio-technical system, organizational structure, policies, processes. In case of automobile design, then what is the organizational aspect? Say, while one new automotive vehicle is being planned and is going to be designed, then deciding the requirement of developing an advanced model is happening inside that company. Who are making that decision? The decision of developing a new vehicle is actually taken by the industry management following market research. This type of decision making related to what type of vehicle is required for a particular market segment is coming under organizational ergonomics. Now, automotive design process. The focus point from the start to end of any automotive design process is the human being, mean user or customer. Who are those user or customer? Already we mentioned that these user are occupant or personnel who are involved in manufacturing, assembly, maintenance, service. So, they are the key point that focus of ergonomics is always starting with human being that is a user or customer and it is also the whole automotive process is also ending with obtaining feedback from the user or customer. So, starting point that is the understanding the customer needs and expectation that is with also human being and it is also ending obtaining the feedback after the product uses. So, this is also coming from the human that is the user and customer. So, major steps in the automotive design process as mentioned by Vishay in his book Automotive Ergonomics in 2016. So, he mentioned understanding customer need and expectation that is the first step, all these steps happens concurrently, not like one after another, it is a concurrent process. So, first one understanding the customer, second product planning, third automotive styling engineering, then detailed engineering, prototype testing validation, tooling design, plant design and construction, production of vehicle and obtaining feedback from the users. So, the primary goal the primary goal of ergonomist is to work with the vehicle design team to produce ergonomically superior vehicle. So, that is the main goal of ergonomist. Now, 
role of ergonomist in the automotive design process under this heading we are discussing about the automotive design process and how ergonomist play important role. So, in the automotive industry while for a particular company they are planning for a new automotive product, the advanced design group plan for that product or that vehicle. So, vehicle planning activity starts after approval from the higher authority or the management, then the business plan of the company management, they give the responsibility to the chief program manager and then chief program manager constitute the functional groups. These functional groups actually dealing with various members who are looking after design aspects, body engineering, chassis engineering, power engineering, electrical engineering, in this way various functional groups are there who are also looking after climate control engineering, then vehicle packaging and ergonomics or human factors engineering, manufacturing engineering. So, various groups are working together. Out of these various functional groups, one important group is that vehicle packaging and ergonomics engineering. This aspect is actually looked after by the ergonomists. So, vehicle design and development is actually a coordinated activities among various functional groups and in that group ergonomists or human factors engineers work in close association with many different vehicle design teams. Now, ergonomists conduct research in the following three areas in the automotive design. So, first one describe this is the first one that is the descriptive ergonomics research, second one experimental ergonomics research and third one is the evaluative ergonomic research. In first one descriptive ergonomic research. So, although these three types of ergonomic research are carried out, but it does not mean these are not mutually exclusive. There is always overlapping or combination of research are happening. So, first one descriptive ergonomic research. So, what is the role here in for the automotive ergonomist? Providing data, describing user characteristics and different limitations. In automotive scenario, we can take the example of measurement and distribution of anthropometric data, biomechanical data, range of data, range of motion data of the driver, passenger as well as the people who are working in the factory shop floor or in the assembly line. In experimental ergonomics research, ergonomics or ergonomics engineer conduct experiments to determine the effects of different design variables, individual components or whole vehicle on the physical, physiological, psychological, cognitive aspects of the user. For example, redesigning the seat and this impact on occupant comfort. Another example, how better design of steering wheel or brake, clutch or uh, then accelerator can be done so that it will be much more convenient for the driver to operate. So, this is the coming under experimental research. On the other hand, evaluative research where evaluation is happening, comparison is happening, which design feature is better than the another one. So, in this case, comparing the proposed or intended vehicle design concept with other benchmark vehicles. For example, determining how the newly incorporated features are superior than the existing one in terms of customer rating. Role of ergonomics in the automotive design process. So, next we are discussing major task of the ergonomist during the life cycle of vehicle design. So, this content is also taken from uh, VCA 2016. So, ergonomist provide the vehicle design teams with needed ergonomics design guidelines, information or data regarding targeted users, ergonomic evaluation during design and development process, recommendation for product decision at the right time that is the called the gateway or milestones in front of the right level of decision makers. So, who are those decision makers? Program manager, chief engineer, senior manager. So, while the uh, particular company is thinking about a new product or modification of the existing product, then while the management is taking decision, then ergonomists play important role by providing various feedback. Now, how ergonomists play active role in the various phases of automotive design process? So, all of you know there are mainly four phases in the any product design process. First one preconceptual phase, second one conceptual phase, then 
pre design stage and the last one is a detailed design stage. So, in all these four stages ergonomists play important role and they guide the design team so that ergonomically superior automotive product can be designed. So, in the first phase that is the preconceptual phase, in preconceptual phase mainly informations are gathered and design limits are selected that within this design constraint or within these boundaries that automotive product to be designed or the existing product to be redesigned for advanced features. Now, in preconceptual phase what are the role of ergonomist? So, first benchmarking of selected competitive vehicles to understand the different designs and ergonomic issues with these designs. Next survey of users need as per the intended market segment using questionnaire, interview etc. in the field or in design clinic. Gathering anthropometric data, biomechanical data along with segment specific preference data for aesthetic variables. So, these different types of data related to customers or users physical body dimensional data, biomechanical data and various preference data that which type of form, which type of color or which type of texture they like that type of informations are to be gathered by the ergonomist and this information to be given to the design team. Next making ready availability of various corporate and regulatory standards and design guidelines including standards of society of automotive engineers. So, that while the engineers or designers are conceptualizing that vehicle they can take care of all these standard guidelines. Next ergonomists also actively participate in design limit selection use context, targeted user population, physical dimension, material, cost, manufacturability, sustainability. So, these different dimensions or different aspects of the design which are to be thought of before designing a vehicle or designing an automotive product. So, ergonomist play a crucial role with other design team members. The next phase that is the conceptual phase. In conceptual phase that vehicle concept is developed. There are various steps starting from the sketching, mock-up development and evaluation of the mock-up. Now, how ergonomist or ergonomics engineer contribute in this second phase that is the conceptual phase. So, they participate in brainstorming and interpretation of the focus group data. They also carry out evaluation of concept sketches, CAD render models, physical mock-ups like clay models, foam core, wooden or fiberglass box etcetera from ergonomics perspective using checklist, scorecards and design guidelines. Ergonomists also participate in concept screening to select the best concept following QFD techniques that is the quality function deployment techniques that out of various concepts which has been evolved from the QFD technique they can also screen the best concept using these techniques. Next the pre-designed phase. In pre-designed phase mainly whatever the vehicle concept has been finalized it is evaluated in terms of ergonomics aspect and engineering aspect. So, ergonomists play a crucial role in this phase because the CAD model or rendered CAD model is evaluated in virtual platform using CAD software with the help of digital human models. So, ergonomists can create digital human models for the occupant and using those human models they can evaluate various human factor issues in that vehicle design. Another activity is that user trial in the driving simulator and test box to get insights of various human factor issues like occupant packaging, entry exit, head clearance, field of view, visual obscuration, uh, location of exterior lights, body cut lines, fuel filler location etc. So, these various ergonomics aspects which are needed to be considered that is also tested through user trials in test bug. Particularly this is important this type of testing is important or quick studies or experiments are required to resolve issues where sufficient information from available guidelines or earlier research is not available. The next phase that is the last phase detailed design phase. In detailed design phase ergonomist conduct task analysis with the 
users in terms of issues related to vehicle usage. So, apart from task analysis, they also evaluate hardware as prototype parts and overall vehicle model. Ergonomists also done assessment on control, display, view, field of view, entry exit, craftsmanship for the first production vehicle. So, in the detailed design phase, while the first production vehicle is coming, that first vehicle is also evaluated from various ergonomics perspective by the ergonomics or ergonomics engineer. So, these are the main four stages in the design process. After the while the design process is complete and the product launched in the market, then also ergonomics continue their role in the automotive design process. What they do? So, they also participate in the test drive and market research clinics to get what are the difficulties the test drivers are facing and also what types of feedbacks coming from the market. So, they generally perform these activities in the market research clinic. They obtain review and acting on the customer feedback data that is the complaints, warranty, customer satisfaction survey, powers rating data, inspection survey with owners, automotive magazine press. So, from these various sources, they get the information and accordingly decide how further modification or improvement is required in the vehicle. Then conducting ergonomic research, translate research into design guidelines for application in future vehicle programs. So, this is the overall role of ergonomist in the various phases of automotive design process and also in post design phases. Now, we are moving to the next topic that is the system design approach in automotive ergonomics. For any system, there are mainly three components. One is human component, machine component and the third one is the environment component. So, while we are talking about the system design approach in design, then we actually deals with all these three components. Under human component, that is the prime component, human is the prime system component from the viewpoint of ergonomics. Under human component, we discuss about the dimensional requirements or human compatibility with the machine components. Then humans physiological requirement, biomechanical requirements, psychological requirements. So, various human factor issues are considered under human component. Under machine components, various mechanical and physical properties of the machine components are discussed. So, physical attributes of the machine or machine components like size, shape, weight, texture, center of gravity location, etcetera are discussed. Then how is the driving energy, safety and hygiene issues, force requirement, moving parts and safety from the moving parts, these aspects are dealt in the machine component. The third one is the environment component, where that equipment or the machine is being used. So, there we are discussing about various physical environmental variables like temperature, humidity, illumination, vibration, noise. So, various environmental aspects are discussed under this environmental component. So, overall while you are thinking about the whole system, then these three components and their relationship and how we can improve this interaction, we need to discuss and we need have to understand that one from the viewpoint of ergonomics. Now, human as a system component, thus designers must treat the human to be component of the vehicle system also. So, in automotive design, human is also a prime component as in that automotive system like as we mentioned earlier, three components are there that is the driver, user, vehicle and environment. That driver or user is a prime component. Apart from that, there are other components like vehicle and its various characteristics then environmental factors. The whole system comprising of these three components have to studied in detail so that there should not be any compatibility issues. So, while you are designing a vehicle, these three components and these various characteristics we have to study like what are the driver characteristics or user characteristics, their uh, physical capabilities, limitations, these aspects we have to look into. Similarly, in terms of vehicle component, type, size, body style, space, system, subsystem components, these have to be taken care of. In terms of environment, road condition, traffic condition, 
weather condition, then the illumination level on the road. So, this type of various factors which can ultimately affect driving performance or these various environmental factors which can create driver distraction, we have to think about that one. Thorough understanding of the intended user population and the operating environment which consists of roadway already we mentioned of the vehicle must be taken into consider to overall address the system approach. Under this, so if we can consider the whole system, then what will happen? We can think about the performance, how well, how much task completion time error of the driver we can improve, preferences like, dislike, more than, less than for a particular requirement, we can also study. Then perception of the driver or user in terms of quality, craftsmanship, harmony, emotions, uh, brand cues that is also needed to be discussed. So, in automotive design, while we are thinking about the ergonomics, we have to look ergonomics from the system perspective, not of for the particular individual component, only for human being or only for vehicle component, not like that way. We have to think the whole system together. Now, we are going to discuss system design V model in the vehicle development process. So, while one new vehicle proposal is accepted in the industry, then it is started with the job one. So, first we define the job one. Job one means the time when the first production vehicle rolls out from the plant. So, that is the first consideration. From that, that is mentioned as job one and time is expressed as zero. That is the zero time and when the product ultimately will be delivered. And from that time in negative direction, we consider the time period where the project to be started. That is expressed like minus x month from this time t that is 0. So, generally for a particular vehicle development process, while the industry is planning for the first production, from that point 12 to 24 months on an average they start the project. So, project starting point is calculated as the negative months. So, when the project is accepted, so first the designers or the whole functional design team who there are already discussed, there are various team members. So, they think about the vehicle concept. Then the overall vehicle concept is divided into various systems and subsystem levels and each of the subsystems then degraded to components level. Now, this side of the V that is from top to down, so top down approach, design and engineering. So, in design and engineering processes, first the overall vehicle concept is developed, then in that vehicle what will be the system, subsystems and how will be the component that is decided. In the next level, this side verification, manufacturing and assembly happening. This is happening in bottom to up direction where the components, small components are assembled to develop the subsystem, while the subsystem is ready, they are assembled to make the system, while the individual systems are ready, then those are assembled to make the full vehicle. So, there are actually three levels. So, vehicle concept, so first level we can consider like this way, the vehicle requirements, so what are the vehicle concept and whether, how will be the actual fully developed vehicle. Then what are the system requirement and how we are developing the assembled system. Subsystem, subsystem requirements based on the subsystem requirements we are assembling the subsystem and these are the components. So, in this way in automotive design process as described by this system design V model, so we start from the vehicle concept and step by step it proceeds like this way and finally, the assembled vehicle get ready and it comes out from the factory.